Welcome back we to Open Your Eyes. And uh, we are now moving into our first segment. Very important to note, uh, this is actually a conversation with representatives of Yaxche Conservation Trust. Now, it's uh, in to talk to us, we've got Christina Garcia. She is the Executive Director of Yaxche Conservation Trust. We have uh, Elizabeth Dorgay, Science Director at Yaxche. Do I have to say it every time? I don't, I don't know. have to say it every time, right? I feel right? like you like saying Said Gutierrez, <laughs> <laughs> Protected Areas Program Director, and Minerva Gonzalez, uh, Project Liaison Officer. Guys, good morning and welcome. Good morning. morning. Thank you. It's nice to have you guys, and we feel the conversation is very, very mm -hmm. important. So let's talk about uh, primarily what we're doing here. Executive Director, let's get this one on the road. So just to give you a little bit about Yaksha and what we do, um, Yaksha Conservation Trust has been in existence from since 1998. Yes. We have three program areas, the Protected Areas Management Program. We manage... Mm -hmm two protected areas with the government of Belize, particularly the Forest Department, and yes. that is the Blade Nature Reserve of 100,000 acres, and then the Maya Mountain North Forest Reserve, which we'll be focusing a little bit on today, okay. um, about 34,000 acres. And then we also have the science program, which Elizabeth manages, and that looks at research and monitoring within these two uh, protected areas, and including a private protected area that we own called the Golden Stream Corridor Preserve. Yes. And then we also have uh, the Community Outreach and Livelihoods Program, which looks at um, promoting smart agricultural practices within 10 indigenous communities in the Toledo District. Why are these areas considered protected areas? We're here to educate, and we want for everybody to be on par with the information that we're dispensing. Why are these areas protected areas? Well, for example, the Maya Mountain Nert Forest Reserve, which this particular project is focusing on is a key biodiversity area. It's a forest reserve um, and the nature and the Bladen Nature Reserve is a nature reserve. Um, in that particular protected area you're only allowed to um, for educational awareness purposes and also research. Um, but like I said the Maya Mountain Earth is a very key biodiversity area. It's very diverse in terms of what species is found, is found within that area. Like, for example, by a mountain nerd, we can find the five cats of Belize. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is scientifically proven because of the work and of the research and monitoring that we've been doing within that particular KBA site. So this particular um, campaign is about restoring degraded land. And I guess it would be within the areas of your, um, of your reserve that you protect. Yes. Let's talk about um, this campaign and why is it that you are all um, putting your focus on it now in particular? Yeah, I, I can share some of that information. We, mm -hmm. So we're focusing this project in an area uh, about 24,000 hectares. It's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty large. Uh, and it covers the surrounding areas on the, uh, the buffer areas of the protected area, Maya Mountain North specifically, um, areas around the Trio village community mm -hmm. and Bella Vista communities. Mm -hmm. A lot of these areas have been used um, for a long time for agriculture purposes and yes. some of it has been degraded over time yeah. Yeah. Um, to the point that some, some people have been moving closer and closer and closer to the protected area. And so mm -hmm. uh, what we've seen that there's been rapid conversion from forest uh, within that 24,000 hectare area uh, to agriculture. And some of that agriculture is not the most sustainable agriculture. And so that's the worry. Yeah. Um, so within this project, we're focusing on converting some of those degraded lands into some form of uh, vegetation cover. So that mm -hmm. be it could be uh, agroforestry. So we could have trees um, being the predominant uh, vegetation cover. Yes. And within that, um, you could have cacao, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but you could also have a mixture of fruit trees and timber that can all you know, contribute to having a, a really nice coverage for vegetation. Mm -hmm. um, so the aim is 500 hectares mm -hmm. within this project. And, you know, we're, we're trying to also uh, spread awareness within those two communities because yeah. that's mm -hmm. where we see a lot of that uh, happening. So mm -hmm. we're, we're also partnering the Forest Department to try to, you know, bring some of that awareness. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, they're the ones that help us out with respect to management and so now they're also helping us with it's more a uh, natural awareness. lifestyle yeah. in these areas mm -hmm. i feel that especially when it comes to bea vista mm -hmm. it is a rapidly growing community mm -hmm. 
which I feel is going to be somewhat of a challenge in trying to restore land in that particular area. How are we going to deal with this challenge? I mean, this is going to be one of the big ones. What's the strategy in going forward with that community? Yes, so, so the restoration that we're doing within these key areas is specifically looking at agroforestry. Hmm. So we're not really, uh, we're looking at two, two things at two different angles. For example, we've been promoting agroforestry with the usage of cacao and coffee within areas, within communities in the um, in the Toledo district. Mm -hmm. So what we're basically doing is really restoring land using the agroforestry system, ah. but at the same time, promoting food security. Of course. You know, because later on, these farmers can um, sell their cacao bean and make some money from it. Yeah. We're also diversifying some of these farms. Like, for example, we're not only concentrating on cacao, but we're also concentrating on other fruit trees that is integrated into this system mm. so that the farmer can survive yeah. on what he or she has on, 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 on their farm. Mm -hmm. And the reception uh, within these areas, I mean, like, like I mentioned, I mean, you're going on yeah. an area, there, they're traditional. Yeah, and then you're actually like putting style. now, you're putting like, for instance, cacao uh, is for chocolate, which is gold. Yes. Yes. That is gold. What's the reception like from the community? They are really receptive. Like, for example, uh, this project, we were a little bit worried at the beginning. Oh, are we going to get participants? But yeah. when we started going into the area and building this awareness, everybody wants to jump on the yeah. project. And I, I think can't that some money to come in. Some money to come yeah. in. Exactly. So that's the kind of uh, re receptive, positive reception that we've been getting from, from these farmers. They want to be involved. They want to convert these lands into agroforestry systems. Mm -hmm. They want to ensure that, you know, they have food security, but at the same time, make some money a little bit later on. So, Elizabeth, let's talk about um, how you are using your strategies and collaborating with these communities to create a, a new environment for this agricultural um, project. Yeah, absolutely. Well, just to kind of piggyback off what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. we don't just hand out the trees to the farmers and hope for the best, yeah. right? So there has to be actual capacity building because yeah. for a lot of these farmers it's the first time they're trying cacao so we also are giving them trainings on you know best farm management practices mm -hmm. soil care propagation techniques mm -hmm. um, so that they can carry it forward so it's it's you know a sustainable thing for them mm -hmm. yeah 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 is there anything that um <clears throat> you have learned from them and uh you plan to implement that in a particular in another campaign or another project Hmm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure there is from the extension team that works very closely with the farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that they they have like a two way exchange going. Is it always yeah. the case? <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, that's, that's a part of it. Because yeah. it, it, this is when you go into these communities, there are things that you learn from them that mm -hmm. you might not have known. Yeah. And the information you're giving to them is, I'm sure, what they don't know but it's actually to make it it's a best exchange. practice lifestyle. Minerva, you yeah. can get in any time, you know? No, I, I wanted to, yeah, let's I get, wanted let's to get, get Minerva in, in. I was in with going the... to, to yes. add one more thing to sure. Elizabeth's points. One more training that will be provided for these farmers uh, is on restoration techniques, mm -hmm. which is exactly what we're talking about today, restoration, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is not just about planting trees, it's about bringing back some sort of ecosystem mm -hmm. functionality of these degraded areas. And to look at it, in a bigger picture. We just launched our National Landscape Restoration Strategy a couple of weeks ago. And this strategy is our roadmap to how to restore the degraded lands in mm -hmm. Belize from now until 2030. Because we have a commitment as a country to restore a large amount, yes. which is 130,000 hectares, mm -hmm. both in the agricultural and the forest landscape. Mm -hmm. So this specific project here is our actual is actually our first project so it's our pilot project mm -hmm. under this strategy mm -hmm. and rightly so it does have to include the participation from communities because at the end of the day we want the people to benefit from restoration mm -hmm. we want to ensure food security livelihoods are being supported and at the same time restoring these degraded lands so this project here tackles 500 hectares of the total 130,000 and it's specific to different restoration techniques that we can use mm -hmm. and 
adding to the question you asked Elizabeth, whether there's something that, if, if there are any things that we have learned mm -hmm. from the farmers, I think throughout time we have been learning from farmers, from the locals, from yeah. the communities, yeah. what they've been doing, and then started to implement that in a more scientific way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. To see the benefits, but with concrete data. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the techniques mm -hmm. that is very important um, for res restoration is called nucleation. It's a big word, but what it means is that you will take five different species of timber or native plants, mm -hmm. And you will plant them in a certain area, and that will mimic natural restoration. Sweet. Wow. Yes. That's a serious. And then eventually it will just... It will come, come back like as a forest and look like a forest and function as a forest. Like a forest. Wow. Exactly. That, that, this, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is because, uh, you know, for the most part, what we do is that we go into our land, we cut things down, and we don't know what we're actually doing mm -hmm. to, to our ecosystem mm -hmm. and our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is actually uh, about restoring it. Yeah. But one of the things that also go, uh, goes through my mind here while we're tackling so many hectares of land is also the encroachment of, of, of others into, into Belize and land. How are we going to deal with that? Mm. What's the strategy, strategy there? Mm -hmm. Come in, come in, guys. I don't want to say it's going this way. You know what this happens when yeah. you ask the um, hard questions, right? You, you, you know everybody look around, but it is important for us to know that we've got neighboring countries where people are actually coming over and trying. They're farming in these lands. They're planting in these lands. They've got livestock in these lands, and they're taking it from us, and right. it becomes troublesome. But we want to restore our land for our people. Right. What are we going to do? It, well, it, it depends on where you're. You're actually focusing that question on because if it's the border areas that's a very complicated situation mm -hmm. where uh, one entity like us like Yasha we cannot tackle it on our own mm -hmm. uh, the forest department for example on their own cannot tackle that so it has to be like a collaborative approach of course mm -hmm. and to a certain extent some form of bilateral communication between Belize and, and uh, neighboring, neighboring countries of course but within the the area for the project there there is some some of that cultural tradition that has been brought in from uh, other countries in Central America because, you know, there's been some influx of immigration over time. Yes. And so some of those traditions, uh, the way how they, they cultivate their crops is far different from what is or we consider traditional here in Belize. And so perhaps one of the things we've learned is that you, you still have to work with the farmer and ask them, you know, what works for you here? Yeah. And then, like Minerva said, we, we have some information that we could feed into that and go, well, okay, well, maybe we can show you a way to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that is kind of our approach for this project. We don't just go in and tell them, hey, this is how and what you will do. Uh, we go in and say, how can we help you? Yeah. When we're talking about campaign in global giving, uh, let's talk about <coughs> your, your international stakeholders and how you're assist they're assisting you and you're assisting them. Um, last time we spoke, Minerva, we were at the Degraded Land um, Conference, mm -hmm. and you did talk about certain projects that will be implemented in order to reduce the amount of, um, of um, emissions that we put into the, into the atmosphere. Is this one of the projects that you were talking about, and what else does the Forest Department have in store? Yeah, well, we have... We have many partners on the international and the regional stage mm -hmm. that assist Belize financially and with technical expertise. Mm -hmm. um, this particular project is being supported by the German corporation. Mm -hmm. So that, that is the German government. And it's one of the countries that are participating in the, um, in the program called Restoring Ecosystems mm -hmm. and Landscapes mm -hmm. through the Green Development Fund. And this fund assists Latin American countries, so in the Sika region, to do restoration projects. And one of the factors that are measured mm -hmm. are carbon emissions or carbon um, sequestration. Mm -hmm. So this project will be monitored for it, as will other projects along, along the line, mm -hmm. and, uh, which are being supported by other international entities. Do you have a timeline? Yeah, what's the duration project? of this project? We're supposed to wrap up this project by the end of April. Okay. okay. Yeah, so it, it was very short, mm -hmm. um, short period for the implementation, but everything has has been on, on track in terms of the, the activities and, and the support from, mm -hmm. from the communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many, so uh, we're looking at the screen, there are so many trees that are, that are being given out. Uh, yes. Do we have a count of that? And I'm sure, of course, 
this is for the good of you know common cause of good so exactly. how many trees have been given out so far uh, so far at least 20,000 wow. the goal is uh, 35,400 at, at least um, so that's yeah that's what we hope will fit into those you know most vulnerable most degraded areas how within that larger 500 hectare how are you planning to monitor turkey thousand <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that well that that's the interesting part of it um never just touched it briefly and we have to monitor it over time not just for the period mm -hmm. of the project exactly. and so through satellite imagery and remote sensing ah. that's going to be the the approach mm -hmm. and so what we have done initially is map all the areas where all this uh, cacao will be so we know exactly where the cacao should be planted and yeah. all the fruit trees and all the timber species and so now we have a baseline to work with and we know all the locations we could continue using satellite imagery to conduct that for as long as we want to yeah, yeah. And how important is the um the updating and upgrading of technologies for yeshe and um i, I understand that this is how you you monitor mm -hmm. um, certain spaces but uh in terms of just continuous to sustain for sustainable development how are we um updating our tech yeah, well, the technology, um, the update at Yashe mm -hmm. is, you know, an ongoing process. Always technology is evolving and we try to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what we have found in recent years is we're uh, building capacity to use drones to take images of the landscape, which mm -hmm. really simplifies uh, a lot of the work that we do, uh, not only for the enforcement and patrolling, but also for actually mm -hmm. this exact work with restoration for mapping the farms, mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, that it's just a, a much quicker process than yeah. going out with the GPS and walking yeah, yeah. around walking and surveying the entire of course. landscape. Which it's you can do. Yeah. And like days. <laughs> Using <laughs> technology <laughs> in land restoration, that <laughs> is the best way possible to actually monitor it. I know that we, we're totally out of time, but I wanted to ask one more question. Cacao is actually a multi-crop uh, multi with a lifespan of what, 20 to 50 years. So you could actually get something from that every so often. Yes. Whose idea was it? Because that's a lifespan <laughs> crop. That's a good one. That is a good one. Well, we, we've been working with the farmers in these agroforestry systems for over 15 years. Yeah. I was going to say so an indigenous thing. Yeah. So yes, forever. Exactly. So these farmers, they, they know about growing cacao. Yeah. And with the information and data we've been collecting over time, that really has helped us to make key decisions in terms of what crops we should utilize in these agroforestry systems, but also, you know, the, the records that the farmers have been taking over time in terms of their yields. See? All right. So, Cacao yeah. farming is a, is a practice we've been doing for, for centuries. Correct. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So, guys, we want to thank you to a very, very important conversation, and I do hope that we could get you back to find out uh, you know what steps we're actually making and the strides that we're actually making in this one. We'll see Thank you in April because I want to hear Thank about you. the success of this project. Christina, Elizabeth, Said, and Minerva. Minerva. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you. And best Thank of you. luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're going to take the break, and when we come back, we'll be having the Ambassadors Fund for Cultural Preservation. That's a big one as That's well, April. Big one. We're going to touch yeah. that when, when we, we come, come back. back. Stay with us.